We learned previously that carbonyl compounds such as aldehydes and ketones undergo nucleophilic addition reactions. In general, aldehydes are more reactive than ketones because the hydrogen that is attached to the carbonyl carbon is more electron withdrawing than the carbon, and therefore the carbonyl carbon has a greater partial positive charge when we have an aldehyde compared to a ketone. Another factor which makes aldehydes more reactive than ketones is that the ketones have the very bulky alkyl groups bonded to the carbonyl carbon, whereas aldehydes have at least one hydrogen bonded to the carbonyl carbon. Since the alkyl groups are much longer, when nucleophiles try to add to the carbonyl carbon, they experience more steric hindrance, which slows down the reactivity of ketones. You should recall from previous videos that for organic compounds, a reduction reaction involves reducing the number of carbon-oxygen bonds in a compound, and at the same time, increasing the number of carbon-hydrogen bonds in a compound. Aldehydes and ketones can undergo reduction reactions in the presence of what are known as hydride ions, or hydrogen anions. The source of the hydride ions will be a compound known as sodium borohydride, NaBH4. A second step in the reaction involves addition of an acid as a source of hydrogen cations. Aldehydes undergoing reduction can be converted to primary alcohols, whereas ketones undergoing reduction would be converted to secondary alcohols. In the first step, a hydride acting as a nucleophile would form an association with the carbonyl carbon, and the pi bonds from the carbonyl carbon and oxygen would go up to the oxygen. This would form a tetrahedral intermediate with a negative charge on the oxygen. In the second step, a hydrogen cation would receive electrons from the oxygen to form a hydroxyl group, and we would then have a stable tetrahedral intermediate, which is in this case an alcohol, and specifically a secondary alcohol, since we started with a ketone. Aldehydes and ketones can react with amines to form new kinds of compounds that we've not learned about before. If a primary amine reacted with an aldehyde or a ketone, it would form a compound known as an imine. An imine is a compound that has a carbon double bonded to a nitrogen. For example, if we had acetone and reacted it with methylamine in the presence of a, an acid catalyst, we would get an imine formed where instead of a carbon-oxygen double bond, we have a carbon-nitrogen double bond. If we have an imine present in an aqueous acidic condition, which means more than a catalytic amount of acid, the imines will undergo hydrolysis back to their original aldehyde or ketone. Now you might be wondering, where's the tetrahedral intermediate in the imine? One of the intermediate structures in the formation of an imine is, in fact, a tetrahedral intermediate. However, this tetrahedral intermediate has both an oxygen and a nitrogen bonded to the same carbon, and as we've learned previously, a carbon bonded to two very electronegative atoms is an unstable tetrahedral intermediate. Through some other steps, this is converted to the imine. If we have a secondary amine, reacting with an aldehyde or ketone, we form a functional group known as an enamine. As you might guess from the name, an enamine has both a carbon-carbon double bond, and then one of those carbons has a single bond to a nitrogen. As with imines, enamines can be hydrolyzed back to their aldehyde or ketone in aqueous acidic solutions. When you get to courses in biochemistry, you'll see some of the biological uses of imines and enamines. Aldehydes and ketones can also react with water. If an aldehyde or ketone reacted with water, they would form a compound known as a hydrate. In order for a hydrate to form, you have to have an acid catalyst, since water is a very poor nucleophile. A hydrate 
has two hydroxyl groups bonded to the same carbon. Most of the time, very little hydrate will actually form since you may notice that a hydrate is a tetrahedral intermediate that has a carbon directly bonded to two very electronegative oxygen atoms and is therefore unstable. However, if we have small substituents and electron withdrawing groups such as hydrogen atoms on the carbon, the equilibrium will shift toward formation of a hydrate. Aldehydes and ketones can also react with alcohols. If an aldehyde reacts with an alcohol in the presence of an acid catalyst, we can get what's known as a hemiacetal. A hemiacetal is a tetrahedral intermediate that has one hydroxyl group and one alkoxide group bonded to the same carbon. If there's two equivalents or twice the amount of alcohol present, we can have the aldehyde form an acetal. An acetal has two alkoxide groups bonded to the same carbon. Again, hemiacetals and acetals will be present as long as there's an absence of hydrogen ions and water in the solution. If there's some acid and an excess amount of water present, the hemiacetals and acetals will be hydrolyzed back to the aldehyde. When we learn about carbohydrates in future videos, we'll see examples where hemiacetals and acetals can form. If a ketone reacts with an alcohol in the presence of an acid catalyst, it will form what are known as hemiketals and ketals, depending on how much of the alcohol is present. A hemiketal has a hydroxyl group and an alkoxide group, just like a hemiacetal. Difference is that a hemiacetal has a hydrogen bonded to the carbon, whereas a hemiketal has two carbon groups bonded to that carbon. If there's enough alcohol present, the hydroxyl group will be placed by a second alkoxide group, and we would have what is known as a ketal. In this problem, we're asked to look at each of the following molecules and to determine if they are hydrates, hemiacetals, acetals, hemiketals, or ketals. Let's look at this first molecule. In this molecule, we should look at the tetrahedral carbon with the different functional groups on it. This carbon, in this case, has a hydroxyl group and a methoxide group, and it's in between two carbon atoms. Because it has one hydroxyl and one alkoxide group, it would be a hemiacetal or a hemiketal. We will distinguish between the two by looking at the atoms attached to the carbon other than the hydroxyl and alkoxide. In this case, we have two carbons bonded to this tetrahedral carbon. That means that it originally was a ketone, and so this compound would be a hemiketal. In this second molecule, we have two alkoxide or methoxide groups bonded to the central carbon. This same carbon has one carbon and one hydrogen bonded to it. Because it has two methoxide groups bonded to this carbon, it would be either a ketal or an acetal. However, because it has a hydrogen bonded to this carbon, it would be an acetal. You should now pause the video and try to determine the type that each of the remaining four molecules is between hydrates, hemiacetals, acetals, hemiketals, and ketals. Once you've tried to answer the following four molecules, restart the video and see if you got your answers correct.